Ng hapon po sa inyong lahat ng public uh, hearing ng Committee on Foreign Relations is hereby called to order on uh, the special immigrant visa applicants from Afghanistan. A request allegedly um, sent to uh, the Department of Foreign Relations through the Embassy in Washington, D.C. We acknowledge online the presence of our good minority leader, um, Coco Pimentel, as well as um, counting on the presence, as indicated previously by Senators Jingoy Estrada, as well as Senator Francis Tolentino, who appears to be on his way to this hearing. Um, with the presence, therefore, of at least one senator, um, we are past that, the uh, chair declares a uh, quorum and hereby call on the committee secretary, Claire Nava, to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons. Good afternoon. We would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Secretary Manalo, Secretary Enrique Manalo from the Department of Foreign Affairs, together with Undersecretary Maria Teresa Lazaro, Bilateral Relations and ASEAN Affairs, Deputy Assistant Secretary Gunter Sales, Deputy um, Office of American Affairs. From the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have Colonel Rolando Escalona Jr., Chief Legal Affairs Division. From the Bureau of Immigration, we have Commissioner Norman Tansinko. From the Department of Education, we have Undersecretary Michael Wesley Poa. From the Department of National Defense, we have Secretary um, Gilbert Chedoro, Jr. Undersecretary Angelito De Leon, Jr. Lieutenant General Ireneo Espino, Assistant Secretary Pablo Lorenzo, Strategic Assessment International Affairs. From the Department of Justice, uh, we have Attorney Dennis Arvin Chan, Chief State Counsel. From the National Bureau of Investigation, NBI, we have Deputy Director Jose Justo Yap, Assistant Director Glenn Ricarte, and Senior Agent Darcy Binayan. Senior Inspector Terence Lamasse. From the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, we have Lieutenant General Ricardo De Leon and Mr. Theodore Libardo, Assistant Director General. From the National Security Council, we have uh, Major General Nestor Herico. Uh, from the Philippine National Police, um, we have Acting Director for Operation Philippine National Police, uh, Brigadier General, Police Brigadier General Leo Francisco. And also we have Police Brigadier General Ronald Oli, Deputy Director for Intelligence. Also from the PNP, we have Police Colonel Reniel Balones. Um, and uh, we would also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Ambassador Jose Manuel uh, Romualdez. Um, additional guest from the AFP, uh, Colonel Maria Cristino O. Basco from the Philippine Air Force. That's all. My Yes, thank you very much, and uh, most especially to uh, Ambassador Bates from all this. Uh, what time is it in Washington? Uh, it's one third, one twelve in the morning. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, pinch yourself to stay awake, babes. Um, Senator Estrada, what wishes to be recognized is online already as well. Thank you, and uh, majority le minority leader. Um, the uh, agenda for today's public hearing is the proposed temporary housing in the Philippines of special immigrant visa applicants from Afghanistan. The general inquiry on the proposed temporary housing um, 
is in accordance with the powers and jurisdiction of the Committee on Foreign Relations under Rule 10, Section 13, Paragraph 18 of the Rules of the Senate in relation to Senate Resolution 5, otherwise known as the Rules of Procedure Governing Inquiries in Aid of Legislation. The minority leader is an expert on uh, Senate procedure, and uh, I just wanted to make clear why we are conducting motu proprio a hearing during the period of recess. During the, uh, given the urgency and uh, the importance of the matter, I feel that we uh, fall squarely under rule aforementioned. So, um, if I may then uh, call on the uh, Legislative Committee Secretary to administer the oath to the resource persons, unless the Minority Leader would like to, uh, to make a comment or Senator Jingoy would have an opening statement. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Chairperson, uh, congratulations and uh, thank you for holding this uh, hearing so that we will get to know more about this issue. So we are doing this in accordance with our rules and uh, I will just be here to represent the minority and uh, to listen and observe uh, Madam Chairperson. So thank you. Thank you, Minority Leader. Um, Senator Estrada, I uh, see you on video. Is there an opening statement, please? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, to our Chairperson, uh, Senator Amy Marcos, distinguished colleagues in the Senate, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon to everybody. I love the chairperson of the uh, of this committee for bringing the public's attention that this very important subject and for immediately calling for this hearing that we hope will clarify many of our concerns with regard to allowing Afghan nationals into our country at the request of the United States. On the provision of temporary housing for foreign nationals, we are facing a housing backlog of around 6.5 million in our own backyard. Shouldn't we prioritize the needs of our fellow men first? Given our housing backlog and the rising cost of living, shouldn't our limited resources be focused on taking care of our own? What is the fiscal implication of, of providing temporary housing to these foreign nationals? Will we be shouldering subsistence costs as well? These are just uh, uh, preliminary questions that I have in mind, Madam Chairperson. And at the appropriate time, I will be asking a few more. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, uh, the Chairman of our Defense Committee here in the Senate, Jingoy Estrada. And with that, um, we establish uh, the chronological order, as we understand it, um, for the uh, uh, concise and um, um, orderly uh, narration of facts. In a news article by the Philippine News Agency, Ambassador Romualdez confirmed that the U.S. made a request sometime in October of 2022 for the Philippines to temporarily house the Afghan special immigrant visa applicants. Um, Ambassador Romualdez, you maintained that there was no secret to the U.S. proposal to allow the entry and temporary housing of the nationals from Afghanistan. May we know how the request was made? Was it merely a verbal order? or is there a written request that can be produced for the committee and the public to know? Uh, well, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair. Um, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, yes, there was a formal request that we received at the embassy, and I hope that we will be able to produce that um, uh, request. But it was also followed up uh, with us uh, through the State Department whether this is possible for us to uh, consider. And so we immediately sent this uh, request to the Department of Foreign Affairs and uh, the secretary um, and I spoke about it briefly and he said that he was going to have this studied uh, uh, before anything, any action could be taken. But that, that is uh, what happened in, uh, when we received this in October last year. Yes, Secretary Manalo, please. Um, the information, therefore, from uh, Washington, D.C. Embassy is that the DFA uh, actually was in receipt of a formal request. Is that the case? Um, uh, good afternoon, uh, Honorable Chair. Good afternoon, Secretary. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, yes, in uh, October 22, as, as relayed by uh, Ambassador Romualdez, uh, we received the... Uh, a uh, 
in a concept note from the U.S. government, a request for the Philippines to allow Afghans formerly employed. What sort of note, please, Secretary? Concept, concept note. Concept note, okay. Uh, it, but it was written, in fact. Yes, yes, written. And uh, it, the idea was to, uh, to allow Afghans formerly emplo uh, employed by the U.S. government and their qualified dependents to temporarily stay in the Philippines to process their SIV applications with the U.S. Embassy in Manila. So we immediately launched uh, informal consultation. Uh, we launched, launched uh, consultations, consultations with, with the Philippine, Philippine relevant, relevant Philippine, Philippine agencies in order to have uh, to uh, to study the uh, concept note and assess the request. The ambassador says that thereafter the State Department also reiterated the request directly to the DFA. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. In fact, uh, the Secretary of State directly uh, raised this with me on a few occasions uh, verbally and also uh, in a letter, which I'd be happy to provide later. And in fact, uh, President Biden also uh, briefly raised the issue with President Marcos during, this, during the visit last May. This is during the May visit. This is during the May the visit, May sir. Yes. yes, thank you. When was the DOJ, the DND, the NSA, perhaps we can go through uh, the list, when were you made aware of the request of the U.S. Uh, we call on the DOJ, please. I think there are several representatives. When were you apprised of the request? Anyone from the DOJ was informed at any point in time? The DND, when were you made aware of the request? Madam Chair, in so far as our records are concerned, uh, uh, when it was in December of 2022. Yeah. Was it from the DFA, from Washington, or from the I State Department directly? From, from the DFA. From the DFA. Is yes. this a letter? Uh, I, I will find out, Madam Chair. I, I would suppose it would have been written uh, okay. merely through meetings, according to Assistant Sorry. Secretary Lorenzo. Merely through convening of meetings, Madam Chair. Meetings? Yes. The convening of meetings, are these the June meetings, the earlier June meetings, or are, is this an earlier occurrence? No, Your Honor, so it was December of last year. December Madam pa Chair. yung meeting? Yes, Your Honor. Sige. Okay, papano yung, uh, yung uh, DOJ? Kailan ninyo nabalitaan itong request na to? Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I stand corrected. Uh, yes, sorry. I was reminded by Secretary Manalo that it was October of last year. Uh, as early as they October. Convened. Yes, Madam Chair. Was that the meeting or uh, um, referral of the said request? Secretary Manalo, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in fact, it was uh, informal. It was an interagency. And in fact, if I could just read off the agencies who were there. Yes, if you could, thank you. Uh, uh, yes, the uh, the meeting that we had called for uh, was attended by representatives from, of course, the DFA, uh, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Department of Justice, Department of National Defense, and the National Intelligence Coordinating uh, Council, and the Philippine National Police. This was on October 28th. So... It is correct, therefore, does uh, the DOJ corroborate the same, that you were formally uh, called to a meeting by the DFA on October of last year, together with the rest of the agencies? Uh, we confirm, Madam Chair, that there was such an uh, interagency meeting of which the DOJ uh, was a part of. Thank you. So does Nika have the same in their records, please? Uh, Madam Chair. Uh, as far as uh, Nika is uh, concerned, this was discussed formally last 20th uh, ATC conference, 26th of April 2023. And uh, so, as far as Nika was concerned, you were only told in April. This was uh, this was uh, discussed 26th April 20th of the uh, ATC Anti-Terrorism Council. I, Nika I'm sorry, was the, I, I'm not hearing you properly. Nika is the uh, Secretariat of the Anti-Terrorism Council, and this was formally discussed uh, before the body, uh, chaired by uh, E.S. Bersamin, and that when? was 26th of April, 2023. 
Only in 2023. Yes. Hindi kayo kasama dun sa October and December. Is that correct? Okay, what about the uh, BI? Immigration, please. Kailan kayo nasabihan? As far as BI is concerned, ma'am, uh, we only attended the June 2, 2023 interagency meeting. It was the first time that uh, our presence was requested. Right. That's uh, the same as our information. Is there anyone from Muslim Affairs and DepEd? They were similarly called, the ICT, the OST, is that correct? Yes, Attorney Guru. Please. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. As far as the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos, we were only uh, informed also of a notice of a meeting. So we were invited to the June 7 meeting. Okay. Uh, anyone from DepEd? Good afternoon, uh, I confirmed that we also attended the June 7 meeting, but... Uh, as far as I am, as far as the records would bear, uh, this came to the attention of the Department of Education back in March 22, 2023, when there was a letter from Director General De Leon asking the Vice President to comment on the subject proposal. I see. Have you commented? Yes, ma'am. We, uh, the Department of Education, uh, submitted a comment that was signed by the Vice President last April, April 20, 20, 2023 to NICA, to Director General De Leon, and I've already also submitted a copy of our comment to the Secretariat for your perusal. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm not yet in receipt. I'm sorry I was not able to read it. The NBI, kailan kayo nasabihan? Thank you, Madam Chair. I will receive a letter last April 20 from the Anti-Terrorism Council where we are required to we were required to submit our comments and inputs. So, magkasabay kayo ng NICA? Yes, ma'am. And then we attended the meeting last June 7. Yeah. At the presentation and management staff. Ah, magkakapareho kayo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Uh, PNP? Nasabihan ba kayo kagay? Yes, ma'am. For the Philippine National Police, uh, we received an email last uh, October 24, 2022. I see. And uh, I see Mr. Libardo raising his hand there. Uh, Madam Chair, from the National Security Council, Deputy Director General Nestor Herico, we received a departmental level uh, from the DFA, from Undersecretary for Civilian Security and Consular Affairs, dated 2 November uh, 2022. And we reply our, when we reply their departmental letter as of uh, 15 November 2022, Madam Chair. Okay, since uh, you were informed through the DFA, but was any of you furnished a copy of the U.S. request? If so, when did you receive said copy of the U.S. request? Secretary Manalo, was there a U.S. request? You said there was. Is that correct? You said that there was a formal request, as a matter of fact? It was you said earlier? It's it a correct? formal request in the form of a concept note. Yes. So was the um, uh, concept note then cascaded to all the relevant agencies like the DND, the DOJ, etc.? Or no. did you keep it uh, confidential? Uh, you know, initially, once we got it, we, we just informed the, the agencies who I'd mentioned, the DOJ, DND, NICA, Philippine National uh, Informed means you told them, but we did can't... not provide a copy of the concept letter. Is that correct? We did. We invited them to a meeting, and in fact, the uh, the general consensus. But he seems uh, to be ignorant of um, the uh, the other resource person seemed to be ignorant of the existence uh, of a concept. Well, no? we we did not invite them yet because we didn't know who would exactly be involved. But from our initial assessment, we thought the one. So the concept note was given to whom, please? To the DND lang, DFA lang at DND yan. Yung sa umpisa, we gave it yung to October. The, we gave it to the agencies whom we invited. In fact, sino sino po? The, but so far, DND, DND seems to be AFP, the only one who've been invited on DND, in twenty. AFP, PNP. Uh, Come again. Uh, can we start? DND, AFP, PNP, PNP Nika, Nika, uh, and then those were the four we had invited initially. Okay. And DOJ. DOJ. Can these uh, five agencies uh, confirm the receipt of said concept note from the United States? Madam uh, Chair, insofar yes. as our records are concerned, uh, I confirm receipt by our Assistant Secretary for Strategic Assessment and International okay. Affairs on Thank 21 you October. Much. On October. Yes, ma'am. A, a letter from the uh, DFA which uh, 
there to attach a proposal for bilateral cooperation to support the okay. processing of uh, Afghan special. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much from the Secretary. Um, DOJ? Uh, we confirm, Madam Chair, that we are also in, uh, we were also in receipt of the concept note. In October? In October. Okay. Uh, AFP and PNP as well as NICA. Kanina sinabi nyo, Abril, Abril na lang kayo nasabihan. Meron ba? Wala. <laughs> Kanina kasi, ang pagkasabi, April 26, 2023 was the first notion you had yeah. during the meeting of the Anti-Terror Council. Did you, uh, I, did you, I confirm did you that, uh, Madam Chair, I will confirm that, that it was discussed last 26 April, but I was checking on the record that uh, we received uh, a notice from NSA 30 March of 2023. March 2023. So you never received the U.S. concept note. It was uh, it was a letter coming from our NSA, not a concept note. No concept note. So uh, there seems to be some um, discrepancy in the transmission. Uh, the three agencies, AFP and PNP, similarly received it later in the in uh, the day right um, ma'am for the pnp uh, uh -huh. we received it on uh, october 24 2022 oh kanina sabi mo kanina sabi mo na abril no ma'am october 24 2022 oh okay kanina iba kasi eh. all right yung afp good afternoon ma'am uh, from the afp okay uh, we received the a uh, memo from the DND uh, dated 25 October. So, okay. yes, ma'am, of 2022. So, DND, but no concept note? Um, request for comments lang po, ma'am, ang nirequest sa amin. No concept. So, both the AFP, the PNP, and the, and the NICA, Oh, no, sorry. Both the AFP and the NICA did not receive the concept note, in fact. That's correct. Because the PNP now says that they actually received it. Pero yung AFP, wala? O baka nakakabit dyan, naka-annex? Baka naka-annex lang yan? Huh? Nakakabit. So AFP, in fact, got it. Yung NICA did not get it. Still, uh, Dick, parang wala. I'm checking my uh, record, uh, right. uh, Madam Chair. That's fine. Um, yes, and we recognize uh, Senator Tolentino. You're uh, encouraged to butt in at any point in time. Is this the usual uh, procedure for uh, requests? Of course, this is not usual business at all. But uh, prior to the resolution filed by uh, myself on June 8, um, was there any press release on the part of the Philippine Embassy in Washington, D.C.? the DFA, or any other government agency concerning the request of the United States and the course of action that the, that the government plans to take, the Philippine government plans to take. Nag-anuncio na kayo, nag-press release, o pinag-usapan na ba to? In any public forum at all? No, Madam Chair, because we were still... Uh, consulting and uh, trying to assess the, the, uh, the implications of this proposal. So nothing was final uh, in that sense because uh, we were still trying to collate all the views. And if I could just mention that after some consultations with the interagency, it was decided to raise it to a higher level in April. And this was when we went to the Anti-Terrorism Council. That was the one in April. And because uh, we felt uh, it should be now considered at a slightly higher level than the technical working level. Then I think the ATC, if I recall correctly, then recommended it be elevated to cabinet level uh, for further consideration. So uh, we tried to follow all the, uh, all the steps by first consulting all the agencies. Uh, and in fact, I'll, I could give later a list of the representatives, at least at the October meeting. And in fact, the purpose of that meeting was to discuss the concept note of the crowded by the United States and to give preliminary um, you know uh, uh, observations and then we proceeded to hold a few more interagency meetings on it to collate 
the uh, the uh, observations of the various agencies. And when we reached the point in April, we had enough of these observations. We decided it's time now to raise it to the higher level or the ATC in April, I think. Thank you. Um, we uh, appreciate your prudence and uh, um, determination to raise it to as high a level as possible. Because until this moment, the terms of the proposal and request of the United States are still shrouded in mystery as far as the public as well as the Senate is concerned. Are you free to share with us um, some of the terms of said request, even only in the concept note? And uh, we have here uh, Senator Tolentino, I think, who's That's true, but then Madam Chair, also are we referring to the same uh, IAC created by virtue of EO163. Is this the same? Oh, no. That's the old one of President Duterte. So we have a new one? No, not yet. Because this was circa 2022. Yes. Wala pa. That's so, uh, from iba yon, iba yon. Duterte. I, I had mentioned the, uh, Mr. Senator. Late, I'm sorry, the, late. the ATC, the Anti-Terrorism okay. uh, Council. Yes, um, Senator Tolentino, what we're trying to determine is how the request was made from the United States. Um, and apparently a concept note was provided by Ambassador Romualdez, forwarded to the DFA, reiterated thereafter by the State Department, and thereafter cascaded to a number of agencies. Not all of the agencies thereafter involved, but some of the primary cabinet level ones were already informed. However, in the interest of transparency, are you able to share with us how many Afghan nationals in total the U.S. intends to temporarily house in the Philippines? How many on a per month or a per batch basis would be housed in this country? I think uh, Senator Jingoy already uh, mentioned our gaping housing gap locally um, and the sudden urgency to house uh, aliens and non-nationals suddenly taking um, primordial concern. Um, Senate Secretary Manalo, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, we have not gone uh, into that kind of detail in our informal uh, consultations with the United States because they have come back uh, now and again over the past few months to provide some, to discuss some of the issues involved. Uh, all I can say at this point, and I say that because there's really nothing agreed yet, but it seems that uh, there is the possibility, if we were able to have any uh, kind of arrangement, we would be having perhaps a pilot group, uh, maybe a limited number. Uh, now, we haven't even discussed that number yet. To first, uh, uh, We could first ex see how that pilot group would work, and then we would decide on how to proceed after that. But we have not gone beyond that uh, that uh, issue other than to say we might have a pilot group but what i can say are the following and these appear in the concept note and also after further informal talks with the united states we understand from the u.s that uh, all afghans who will be travel will be traveling with valid passports and will have already before they were to arrive if they were to arrive here would already have undergone rigorous security vetting and background checks to verify that they have indeed previously worked for the U.S. government, because these would be Afghans who had worked before with the U.S. government. And uh, we've also been informed that all costs would be shouldered by the United States government. The, the, also, the United States would, uh, with Philippine officials, try and select a suitable site where they could be located while they are being uh, processed or vetted. Uh, it would, of course, be up to the Philippines. We also mentioned that to them, that if any arrangement, uh, it would be up to the Philippines to impose mobility restrictions and internal movements within the Philippines. Uh, the U.S. also uh, committed to us that in the event uh, there are Afghans who come here for processing, that no one would be left behind in the Philippines. And that includes the, uh, even those who may be denied uh, an SIV whom we expect will be removed to another country outside the Philippines as soon as their maximum allowable period of stay expires. Uh, and therefore, uh, any agreement we feel uh, on this effect with the U.S. must contain provisions regarding the removal of those denied uh, an SIV. Um, there are also a number of 
points I could yes uh, secretary we're in receipt of your ah, okay. uh, of your uh, briefer thank you very much you. yes that's correct so uh, the numbers have not been discussed but there have been uh, various reports perhaps uh, um, ambassador Romualdez you could help us there are reports that uh, upwards of 1,000 eligible Afghan nationals per month would be sent, um, maybe 1,005 to 2,000 per batch, reaching a total of 30 to 50,000 Afghan nationals to arrive in the Philippines under this effort. Is that correct, uh, Ambassador Amualdez? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, that, is a, uh, that is what they were telling us that uh, they would like to see if they can bring in at least a thousand uh, per 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 batch. Uh, however, I just want to point out that it is really completely. Does it up mean to us. per batch per month? Um, and the second batch will not come in until the first batch of one thousand um, has departed and been processed to go to the United States. Or will there be thirty to fifty thousand total Afghans in the Philippines at one time? It's, it's completely up to us on how we want to uh, proceed with this request. We can have it a thousand each time and they will re be uh, repatriated to the United States once they receive their SIVs or they will bring in perhaps uh, one or two thousand. It depends on the kind of uh, uh, boarding or lodging that they will provide, which all, all of these, they will be uh, at their expense. Yes, thank you. Uh, I would like to call on Senator Coco Pimentel, who has been raising his hand. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. May, may I ask, where are these uh, potential Afghan refugees right now? Ambassador from way, Yes, from the way I understand it, uh, they are currently located either still in Afghanistan, uh, perhaps some, some of the mem family members of this uh, people who worked in the United States with the United States government, but uh, the the last uh, conversation I had with the State Department is that uh, some of them are in Pakistan at the moment. So, so thank you for that uh, point of information, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Senator Tolentino, please. Mr. Valdez, a few questions. Uh, you're willing to answer some. Aside from the United States, there are existing similar SIV programs right now. We have one in Canada, the special immigration measure. We have one in Germany, also uh, applicable to the Afghans. The United Kingdom has the Afghan Relocations and Assistance Policy, or ARAP. Australia, Australia has, the, has, the pro, has a program known as the Afghan Locally Engaged Employees, or LEEE. -E. Aside from the United States, were there requests coming from the, uh, the, the other countries I mentioned a while ago? Uh, not, not to us, uh, not that I know of. But you are aware of the several programs I mentioned a while ago? Yes, they, are. they, they, they pointed it out to us that there are programs of other countries uh, similar to what they were requesting. And if you're familiar with these programs, these are, these are short-term, temporary uh, programs that would entail the processing of Afghans displaced prior to their relocation, for instance, to Australia, United Kingdom, Germany, Canada. Am I correct? Yes, sir? that's correct, Senator. So, ang po sa atin, temporary site controlled by the Philippines, as mentioned by Secretary Manalo, perhaps a site with proper security measures, and perhaps a site uh, funded by the United States. Is the United Nations involved? Um, but, uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, perhaps Secretary Manalo could. Uh, I don't think the United Nations is involved in this. Ma Madam Chair, the reason why I'm mentioning this is that, as we speak, there are 29 to 33 Filipinos still in Kabul right now, working for various NGOs. We have, correct me if I'm wrong, Secretary Manalo, we have accepted a similar number of Syrian refugees. And, and, and during, during the past decades, we accepted several East Timor refugees. 
And if my, hindi pa ako buhay. Uh, during the time of President Quezon, uh, siyempre po, libo-libo po yung Russian Jews. So that the question of distance probably is inapplicable right now. And during the time of President Marcos, we have the South Vietnamese uh, being stationed temporarily in Palawan. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador, kung sakali pong pumunta rito yung Afghans, ang kinakatakutan po kasi ng marami, parang, parang uh, nagkaroon ng stereotyping na eh, suicide bombers ito. Ito po ba eh, mga edukado? Ito po ba eh, mga kababaihan? Ito po ba eh, binubuo ng pamilya na naiwan? Hindi po ito yung mga nakasabit sa aeroplano. Ito po mm, yung yeah. naiwan doon dahil nagtrabaho sa mga embassies. Tama po ba? Mm. Tama, tama. Hindi, uh, all of them, uh, lahat sila nagtrabaho sa, for the U.S. government in, in one way or the other. At saka yung kanilang mga pamilya. Kaya it's, it's anywhere between 50 to 60,000 that are still uh, being processed for uh, uh, and, and you're, to the United And you're States. perhaps aware, Mr. Ambassador, that we, ha we are a signatory to countless international agreements yes. that would, that would, that should allow us to accept uh, these Afghans uh, yes. in our soil. Tama po ba yeah, yeah. That's correct, um, uh, Senator. And are you aware of this? I, I hope my, my pronunciation is right. I, have, I haven't been to France yet, uh, Madam Chair. Refoulement, refoulement would mean the return of a refugee to his her, or her former state against his will, where he will be more threatened by, in this case, the Taliban. So, pag yung nakarating po sa atin, nagdili-dali nag, nag, nag tayo, pinabalik, marami po tayong violation. Tama po ba yan, Ambassador? Uh, yan, hindi ko sigurado yan. Pero ang, ang, ang alam ko lang, the United States government uh, has, has assured us that whoever that we will allow to come into the Philippines for processing, they will take care of them completely. In other words, if they are for some reason denied uh, the SIV that uh, their, the processing will take place, they will be immediately sent to another or a third country. Thank, thank you, Mr. Ambassador. One, one last point, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Secretary Manalo, correct me if I'm wrong. My data uh, was was prepared several weeks ago. More than 90,000 Afghans have been resettled across the United States over the past 20 months. More than 11,000 SIVs were issued to Afghans between October 2021 and September 2022. According to official figures, tama po ba yan? Um, I cannot confirm, Mr. Senator. Yes, uh, kung sakaling yung tama yung binabanggit niya na 50,000, 1,000, mapapasama tayo rito sa figures na to. Kung dito ipoprocess to. At the rate they're going, 11,000 uh, halos isang taon, 90,000 ang uh, relocate. May posibilidad ba ho, Mr. Ambassador, na bumagal? Dahil nandito, natambak sa atin, meron ba hong ganun posibilidad? O well, nagunawa na kayo sa tanong ko? Hindi, na, nasa sa atin na yun, Senator, na kung, kung ilan ang gusto natin. Pero ang, ang request nila is anywhere between 1,000 to 1,500 per batch. Ipoprocess nila, then they will, be, uh, they will go to the United States. Uh, kung gusto natin less, pwede rin. Ang tinatanong na sa atin is exactly yung kanilang... Uh, tinatanong or rinirequest sa atin what is it that we will be able to get back to them that we can, uh, we can accept in other words uh, not all of this 30,000 or whatever it is they intend to process will come to the Philippines and then uh, they will be here and, and they will wait for their processing it will be by batches Definitely, Mr. it's completely up to us so. Mr. Ambassador narami ho nakikinig ngayon definitely the Philippines will not be the final destination of these refugees. Uh, yes, that is temporary absolutely lang po, Temporary lang po sila dito. Ang kinakatakutan ng marami ay baka malahokan ng mga terrorists. Kaya oh, na-elevate na sa Anti-Terrorism -ter Council, etc., etc. Naniniwala po kayo, uh, Mr. Ambassador, na, na ito pong pinag-uusapan natin ay pangamba na pos may posibilidad na 
hindi naman dapat mangyari kasi na-vet na po yun bago dalhin dito. Correct. Ayan, ayan ang tama, Senator. Kaya nga lahat ng ating mga security agencies ay uh, tinatanong ng DFA dahil they also will have to give their comments kung anong tingin nila. Pero yan ang sabi sa atin ng mga Amerikano na they will be vetted first, they will be uh, double-checked before they come to the Philippines and then again through processing. Madam Chair, uh, if I may be allowed to express my personal sentiment, I don't see anything wrong here. Uh, sa tingin ko po, kung talagang na-vet ito, nag nagkaroon lang ng konting hype, stereotyping, bordering on discrimination. Na siguro naman, mabubutin tao yung iba. Yung mga FW po natin, eh, nasa iba't ibang bansa, tinatanggap naman po yun. Kasasabi ko lang, merong uh, 33 na, na Filipinos pa sa Kabul. So siguro kung masasala po ito, wala tayong gastos, nasa secured na lugar, nasa isang isla, I think, Mr. Madam Chair, uh, we have abided and complied fully with all our international humanitarian commitments, including the possible erasure of what they term as, quote-unquote, human rights records of our country. Malinis na ho tayo dito. We're, 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 we're uh, getting here with clean hands. Tinulungan po natin yung mga tao na wala namang Okay. Kasalanan. Details will be will be laid down. But yun lang po yung sentiments ko, Madam Chair. But yes, ang mali lang po dito siguro yung proseso uh, shrouded in non-transparency manner, uh, not revealed to the country, not full explained. Siguro DFA ang dapat managot yan. Pero yung, yung, yung mga Afghans, wala po silang kasalanan. Salamat po, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat, Senator Tolentino. Uh, ngunit, uh, ang ating tinatanong ngayon, eh, kung bakit uh, ipapadala ng Amerika ang kanilang mga dating empleyado sa ating bansa? Wala naman tayong kinalaman dito. Hindi ba nila nga tayo binigyan ng dahilan? What reason was given by the U.S. for making the aforementioned request, if any? Ambassador Moaldes, Secretary Manalo, and um, as mentioned by uh, Senator Tolentino, are they in fact refugees? What is the understanding of the DOJ, the DFA, and the BI of the term refugee? Ambassador Moaldes has explicitly stated these are not refugees. They are former Afghan employees of the U.S. government. I need clarification po. Secretary Manalo, Ambassador um, Romualdez, please uh, respond and uh, lend us light here. Secretary Chodoro is uh, uh, shaking his head. Would you like to both in, please? Thank you, ma uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Technically, they're not refugees because basically they're not displaced. They're in their homeland right now. They have not applied for political asylum or any other thing. They're not in on extraterritorial jurisdiction. My understanding is that their visas for the United States shall be processed within this country because of administrative difficulties of the U.S. government, because of their bureaucracy in conducting any processing, but they are not refugees as of this time. They may become refugees Some. if that is correct. their visas are denied, denied. and they are not and repatriated. Not allowed to be repatriated. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, I'm in full agreement. I think they are not refugees, as rightly pointed out by Ambassador Babes from all this. Is that correct, Ambassador? Um, was uh, your statement regarding the fact that these are not refugees we are speaking of and there is no doubt that the philippine upholds and um, um and takes pride in our history of giving soccer and refuge to international refugees um ambassador Romualdez, please these are not refugees yes. correct yes absolutely correct uh, madam chair they are not refugees they are employees or former employees of the U.S. government, and they're asking us if they, we could help them in processing them, precisely as pointed out by Secretary Tidoro, that it is a matter of administrative uh, in nature. Thank you. Um, that being the case, uh, I get affirmation as well from DFA Legal that they are not refugees. That is correct? 
Okay, if that is uh, the status of these individuals, what is the basis, therefore, of the executive branch of government for admitting them into the Philippines under Section 47 of Commonwealth Act 613 on the power of the president to admit aliens for humanitarian reasons, expressly referring only to refugees? Yes, Secretary Manalo, please. What is the basis, uh, since they clearly are not refugees, they cannot be accommodated under, under Section 47 of the Commonwealth Act? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in fact, the, the notion, as uh, we understood it from the concept note of the United States, is there's no intention to leave them here in the Philippines. They're, all, we're all, they're only going to use the Philippines as a temporary site where they're processing for their eventual uh, trip to the United States. Uh, provided they pass all the vetting. And the U.S. Uh, in our talks has uh, also assured us, if in case we agree, that uh, they would ensure that uh, none of the SIV applicants would be left behind, nor have the option to consider remaining in the Philippines to seek refugee status. So this would only be, uh, in effect, a temporary uh, situation. And if uh, I could just... Given the extraordinary circumstances, and we appreciate the emergency concern, um, the uh, worry is, um, what shall be their status while they remain in the, in the Philippines? Will they be non-immigrants or immigrants? What kind of Philippine visa will they be given? Under what treaty will their rights and obligations be uh, governed? The problem is that the special immigrants visa has uh, been promised um, in two weeks. The reality is that we are also aware that they could come um, as late as 59 days. In the United States, 77,000 continue to wait for their visas for periods longer than four years. May we have clarity on their status while they remain in the, in the Philippines? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in this case, uh, the Afghan nationals who would be coming here are, in fact, all Afghan nationals are listed as Category A. Uh, in other words, restricted nationals who are required to apply for a visa in the Philippines. And uh, normally we would give them up to 30 to 59 days. So sorry, what will they be again? Non-immigrant, immigrant? immigrant non-immigrant so non-immigrant so claria non-immigrant okay yeah. and uh, under which treaty are we uh, governing the rights and obligations non-immigrant sa ilalim ng alin okay i'll have to consult on that madam chair which treaty M madam chair we had a meeting yes secretary uh, on monday uh -oh. with uh, the under secretaries of the doj and uh under secretary lazaro and under secretary vasquez actually the major problem here really is uh, a a uh, an immigration problem and a and a legal problem and so uh i think if the doj is already prepared because uh they still have to come out we have requested them finally for an opinion on the potential status of these people and the problems in case uh, or the way forward in case their SIVs are denied. To date, Madam Chair, uh, we are still waiting for the opinion. It was only formalized uh, last week that the DFA shall be the lead agency in our conference, person-to-person -person conference. And uh, we are very sensitive to the issues raised by the chairperson that this not being per se a humanitarian issue, it could turn into a humanitarian issue in case the obligations of the other party are not complied with. Uh, therefore, this was raised to us by the DOJ. Thank you very much. Yes, we're, uh, we're uh, very pleased and uh, truly the differences are glaring between refugees, non-immigrants, and immigrants insofar as regulations, restrictions, and their freedom of movement is concerned. So uh, what would be off the top of our heads um, the status if they were non-immigrants, they would be granted freedom of mobility while they are waiting, as they are in the National Convention Center in Arlington, Virginia, as we're well aware. 
or as non-immigrants? Will they be confined to a single space, apparently in Clark, New Clark City? Um, is that the consideration? What other distinctions do you think are important? I believe that the NBI is deeply concerned about the security uh, uh, permutations in as much as they would impact on our own uh, public safety. Madam Chair, if I may be yes, permitted, uh, to answer, even the housing is still under consideration. We also do not want them to be housed as if they were detainees which is the furthest thing from the image we want to portray. And keeping them for an extended period of time within a confined environment, particularly with their children involved, will not only complicate their physical liberty, but their, the end state of their mental health and wellness too. That is why, Madam... There's also... Secretary, Secretary sorry to butt in, but actually, there's also the consideration that they'll be coming back and forth to apply for their special immigrant visa from New Clark City uh, and all the provinces involved going towards the U.S. Embassy in Metro Manila. I, is that our understanding? Madam Chair, in so because far as... Because that is uh, what is stated so far in the brief. Uh, no, Madam Chair, as, as far as the informal discussions between us last week is that there will they, 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 all the services from uh, the processing to their medical care shall be done on site. This is not medical care. I think this has to do with their visa application. Even then, Madam Chair, the U U.S. Embassy has to place extension services. Parang iba yung sinabi ng DFA. Ang sabi ng DFA, mag apply pa sila sa consular offices uh, ng U.S. Embassy. Wala uh, dun sa Clark. Pabalik-balik sila. Kaya yung sinasabing uh, confined to a certain space, hindi realidad yun. Yes, Secretary uh, Manalo. Although NBI is recommending, according to their briefer, I hope I quote you right, na sana magpadala ng visa, special visa officer na lamang dun sa lugar, imbes na ganito. Yes, Secretary Manalo, please. Yes, so Madam Chair, uh, when we referred to the uh, the uh, U.S. Embassy, etc. here, that is the U.S. proposal. And uh, we still have to react to that. And I think Secretary Teodoro, after we talked, felt that we feel perhaps that this should not be the arrangement. But the, the U.S. proposal, at least in their concept note in discussions, was that the, the applicants would uh, visit the U.S. Embassy here in Manila for a visa interview and then an embassy-identified hospital for medical evaluation uh, for the actual issuance of U.S. visa. That is the U.S. suggestion. We, yes, that's the American suggestion. We are not necessarily in agreement with that. Uh, I understand. Uh, the reason, of course, is that uh, until October of last year in the National Convention Center of Virginia, where they were actually being processed, they could leave the facility at any time, were not considered prisoners by any means, and could therefore have freedom of mobility. Is that the same thing we're suggesting? And um, have we consulted New Clark City, Tarlac, for example, Pampanga, Subic, uh, and the rest of the... Uh, ramparts. Yes, uh, Secretary Chodoro, please. Uh, Madam Chair, we have not proceeded to that extent as far as I know. And if there will be, uh, in, in so far as the Department of Defense and perhaps even our uh, fellow security sector officials, the least amount of area they can travel from and to would be naturally physically better for us. Now, the optics of this may be different, but uh, the least amount of travel. However, we have not discussed in, in, in thorough detail a, a, a definite site where, where, where this will be. And we definitely have to consult with the officials involved in the areas, uh, just like we have when we apply for an ECC, for that matter, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, I, I'm just curious why there's been a change of heart. I mean, in uh, in the past, we're aware that following the uh, um, the withdrawal of the United States from uh, Kabul, um, 
many Afghans were processed uh, in the United States. Bakit bilang na bago? Uh, they used to house the Afghan evacuees in facilities within the U.S., like I said, the National Conference Center in Virginia. And then in September 2022, there appears to have become a new strategy where the Afghans arriving in the U.S. no longer will be temporarily housed in safe haven facilities in the U.S. What is the reason? Maybe Ambassador Amualdes, you can tell us what is the reason for the change in strategy of the United States. Bakit ayaw na nila tanggapin yung mga Afghan doon sa national convention sa Arlington eh napakarain na nung dumaan doon but biglang nagbago at biglang tayo na ang kinakatukan well uh, uh, actually they really the fact is that they they're quite a number of them and as you said they have that here in in, in Virginia but the main reason why they're also asking other countries, we're not the only one, by the way, it's there are other countries, I think Germany is also being asked, uh, they also had a processing center in Qatar, and uh, from what I understand, also in Albania, uh, is because there's just so many of them that they would like to be able to do it quickly, as quickly as possible, because they have they have a timeline, I suppose. And that's the reason why we're being asked as a um, as an ally of the United States. We are one of a number of countries that they have requested if they could use it, uh, they use the country for the processing of these Afghan nationals that work with the United States government. Yes, Ambassador, you say there are just too many Afghans. We're talking about tens of thousands because we have heard that uh, 25,000 were already processed through UAE, 10,000 in Qatar, you now mentioned Germany and Albania. Are there tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions? Is there a projected number to this uh, enormous migration? The number that uh, we, 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 we received was around 50,000 that are still for uh, process. 50,000. Yes, this includes uh, government, uh, government uh, people who work with the U.S. government and their families. Pero kung 50,000, yun din ang hinihingi sa Pilipinas. You mean to say 100%, yung buong 50,000, lahat babagsak sa Pilipinas? Hindi, hindi naman. Bakit na huminto yung UAE at yung Qatar? Ba't sila huminto? Bakit huminto yung US? Eh, dati naman, pinoprocess doon, nakatenga pa, 77,400. Bakit tumigil ang US? Bakit sila tumigil? Bakit bigla Pilipinas ang naisip? Well, hindi naman naisip. Ang, 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 ang pagkalam namin, they were asking other countries, and the Philippines is one of them because of the fact that we have this relationship with the United States, uh, we're an ally. So uh, they thought that uh, the, the Philippines could be a place where we could uh, uh, allow them to process uh, their special uh, immigrant visas. The reason I ask, sir, is that uh, UAE and Qatar are obvious processing areas because of their distance. And they're already doing this, 25,000 and 10,000. Why did they stop? Kung 50,000 na lang ang uh, butal, eh kayang-kaya na nila idagdag doon. Nagkakaintindihan sila, magkapareho sila sa kinakain, sa gawi sa iba't ibang uh, paninindigan at paniwala. Well, pwede natin itanong sa kanila kung bakit uh, biglang tinigil. Pero ang pagkalam ko, umingi sila ng uh, tulong sa atin kung gusto kung pwede nila i-process yung kanilang uh, mga government employee yung nagtabaho sa kanila uh, dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, as, as one of the many countries that they're asking for this. Thank you. Yes, I'm not unwilling to help. Like all Filipinos, we have an open arms policy to all refugees throughout the world at any time. However, um, it appears to me that uh, we are an unlikely candidate simply because napakalayo po natin para inilalayo natin sila lalo samantalang meron ng existing unang-una kung babagsak rin sila sa US bakit hindi nga ituloy-tuloy na lamang yung nandyan sa Virginia nahinto ba since uh, Washington DC is clearly by Virginia have they stopped processing people in the National Convention Center please I don't think so I think they're still processing a number of them uh, at the as but, of now. 
I I see because I understand uh, from press releases that uh, with the uh, Operation Allies Refuge, Operation Allies Welcome, and the other uh, enduring welcome efforts of the United States, um, the Biden administration announced that Afghan na nationals in October 1 of 2022 will no longer be able to enter the U.S. under the Humanitarian Parole Authority. So tinigil sa U.S. Samantalang ito, empleyado ng U.S. Bakit tayo ang magiging sangkalan? Yun lang ang tanong ko. Mm -hmm. Well, pwede natin itanong sa kanila kung bakit sa atin na. Pero as I said, uh, isa tayo sa mga ibang mga bayan na humingi sila ng tulong kung pwede idaan doon bago nila dalhin sa Amerika. Would you know if Thailand, our good neighbor and ASEAN partner, which is a treaty ally of the United States, has been requested by the United States to process Afghan employees as well? Uh, I, that I am not sure, uh, Madam Chair. I have been told that no request was ever made to Thailand. Mm -hmm. Why only the Philippines? Well, uh, as I said, they approached us in October and uh, we said that we will consider it and we're going to study the matter. But uh, we have not uh, asked them why you picked us. The only reason uh, they told us is because they felt that the, the Philippines was uh, an ally that they could ask this uh, particular favor, perhaps if you want to call it that, and they have brought it up to the highest levels in our in, in our government, including the president. Okay, so if the U.S. is unable or unwilling to temporarily house their Afghan employees in U.S. soil, why don't they go to U.S. territories such as Guam, Puerto Rico, Guantanamo? Secretary Manalo, you're raising your hand. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I thought I would just say a few words on this uh, issue, on, on, on the uh, why the U.S. might have approached us. Of course, we, we um, can only surmise, but w what I gather is aside from being a, a partner and a treaty ally, I think they also are aware of our long tradition of providing humanitarian assistance. So that's why uh, they have approached us. O on the... Um, United States is actually these are SIV applicants and, and not refu not not uh, applying for refugees I mean they're not refugees as such and I as we understood from the United States their laws require that th this category SIV applicants have to be processed in third countries not I mean not in the United States so perhaps those could be the reasons why um, in fact that's one of the reasons why they they approached us on this. Eh, now, pero magulo rin sa atin yan, di ba? Kasi, mm -hmm. under our immigration rules, and uh, the BIA is here to confirm, Norman, please, um, Afghan nationals are category one nationals. They should first obtain Philippine visa before entry in Islamabad. Isn't that correct? So that puts into question their status if they remain in the Philippines as well. So that also puts into question our uh, ability to impose our laws on all those in our territory. And yes, we'll sure. sacrifice all that simply because we'd like to accommodate a favor that could probably be better served elsewhere. Just a question. Uh, that's why we have to be very clear uh, if we were to accede to this, that our laws would be followed. And if they have a, a stay of 30 to 59 days, for example, in accordance with our category A, then we would have to apply that strictly. And we would have to make that very clear to the United States that they could not stay, long not stay longer than they are allowed, uh, according to Philippine law, because of their specific category. And that's the point we would, uh, whenever we, if we ever get into negotiations with the US formal, we would have to insist on these points. Yes, Secretary, this is a real problem uh, because of the change in strategy in the United States and the refusal now to extend humanitarian parole authorities. Um, 
We are not certain they will actually receive their special immigrant visas. And the delay, as we know, has been tremendous and admitted by the Americans themselves. Um, sadly, unfortunately, the Humanitarian Parole Authority is one that myself and my family um, utilize, so I'm inordinately familiar with the same. It guarantees no residence. It guarantees no rights or uh, any other uh, abilities under uh, that status, nor any immigrant or uh, other uh, privileges. So uh, um, it's not something I would wish on anyone. Um, OK, there's a further question. You said that rigorous security vetting has already been done by the United States government. What about the Philippine government? Are we able to undertake rigorous security vetting and background checks? Will we be able to go over their employment uh, records and all their uh, family details from Islamabad through our uh, very meager embassy deployment out there that covers Kabul at this point? Madam Chair, if the, if the category would be former U.S. government employees, then the job is much easier because they would have been vetted in the first place before they would have been hired. Admittedly, there are problems with their family members, if ever, who were not vetted. And that is one of the issues that we would want to go through. Uh, what kind of vetting did they go through in the first place? Uh, which uh, I personally, I uh, wonder if the other uh, agencies, what standard they will apply. Yes, the NBI has questioned that. So have uh, some papers from the BNP questioning our ability to actually vet uh, the incoming Afghans. What we are certain, Madam Chair, is once they arrive in country, then we can, of course, uh, take precautions as to what they may do. Because, for example, like even in, in voice calls or whatnot, uh, we can uh, have them sign uh, certain waivers, like when you answer a call center, this phone call is being recorded for your protection, or even like a company email or a Senate email for that matter. However, insofar as their backgrounds are concerned, there definitely will be some gaps. However, insofar as the NSC position is, Depending on the uh, arrangements made for their stay here, uh, the number of those that will be uh, agreed upon, the risk is low. So yes, certainly. We low. appreciate your anxiety and we share the NBI, the PNP, the AFP's concern, as well as the uh, anti-terror uh, group's concern that um, we simply do not have uh, sufficient information and capability to get uh, background checks on all of them. Uh, and even if we confine them to quarters and treat them uh, almost as immobile prisoners, uh, the reality is there are IT and other uh, communications technologies available. The other consideration is NBI has mentioned uh, the presence of sleepers among Afghan applicants as being highly probable, that the presence of SIV applicants could make the Philippines a target for Taliban and its splinter groups, and um, so on. Um, is that a reality? We so far do not recognize the uh, Taliban uh, government in Afghanistan, although we have had diplomatic relations with the country uh, for a long while now. Um, what exactly uh, do we anticipate? NBI, perhaps, since you are... Um, uh, very concerned about the security aspect and uh, submitted an early paper on the same. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, I think the apprehension uh, we noted is that uh, uh, they may have uh, sympathizers from the southern Philippines, from our Muslim brothers. So that is a possibility, Madam Chair. 
Yes. Um, would anyone from NICA and the other security agencies would like to comment that uh, local terrorist groups could exploit the situation and uh, be strengthened or encouraged in some way by the presence of um, the Afghans here? Uh, from NICA, Madam Chair, uh, we all also express the same uh, anxiety because they are given also the opportunity to uh, for this uh, some terrorists uh, to travel, and that is a problem of uh, records checking, and uh, it will pose some uh, security concern later on. Yes, quite apart from um, the um, background of these Afghans, will it be a source of propaganda and extremist narrative in pro-Taliban and Al Qaeda groups? other sympathizers that we are all fully aware of that exist in our Muslim South? Certainly, uh, Madam Chair, uh, this could be used as a propaganda. And uh, it could also, since uh, our, our apprehension is about the sleepers, uh, they could always uh, be activated and uh, it will have an impact as far as uh, revival of uh, some activities in the South. Yes, the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos uh, are very concerned about peace in Mindanao. Attorney Guru, you uh, expressed some doubt about this effort. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the same sentiments we raised uh, during the June 7, we are not uh, particularly concerned about the infiltration or the uh, sleepers uh, among this uh, coming Afghanistan but more of uh, being a target of an attack. Uh, as we all know, just recently, this uh, Wednesday, an incident happened in Marawi again uh, concerning uh, the same group who caused the Marawi siege. So apparently they're regrouping and uh, they're growing in numbers because of the continuous uh, problems in Marawi that up until now, most of these, most of these uh, uh, affected by the Marawi siege were not yet, uh, you know, they have not returned to their uh, homeland or to their uh, uh, homes. So these are the concerns for the uh, uh, National Commission on Muslim Filipinos because if their mobility will not be limited and even if their mobility will be limited, uh, these people from the south or these uh, uh, sympathizers of the uh, ISIS-inspired group can easily, you know, travel to uh, Luzon. And uh, that is the concern, actually. Uh, we agree with the Security uh, Council that as far as the infiltration of, uh, you know, Taliban inspired from this Afghanistan, that is very slim. But for the uh, security uh, concerns of those uh, uh, within the Philippines already, like the sympathizers of these uh, leftist groups. Yes, that uh, seems very obvious, right? Um, yes, I think, doesn't the fact that the U.S. no longer wants to house these foreigners in safe havens within territorial United States raise concerns for us. Um, they're claiming that they're very low risk security, that highly vetted groups uh, will be the only ones coming and that the SIV is assured. And yet they don't want them. Doesn't this raise concerns on the background and character of these individuals? Ayaw nga ng empleyado, eh, ng employer. Ayaw ng employer kunin yung dating empleyado. Eh, ba bakit tayo ang uh, kukuha? Tayo hindi nangangamba. Sila ayaw. Ba't ganun? Walang sasagot? Secretary Manalo, no, just, just, just playing devil's advocate and... Uh, well, it, it seems logical. Sila yung employer. Eh, ayaw nila dun sa mga empleyado nila. Ayaw nilang kunin. Ba't tayo kukuha? Wala naman tayong kinalaman dyan. Hindi natin kilala. Hindi natin kaano-ano. Naaawa tayo, pero maawa muna tayo sa sarili natin. Yes po. Yes, Ambassador po. Babes, Jingoy. Well, actually, Madam Chair, sinabi na nga ni Secretary Manalo, which I confirmed that in, ito ngang special immigrant visa, kailangan talaga, bago sila makapasok sa Amerika, ipoprocess sa labas. Iba yung, yung refugee status case dito sa special immigrant visa. Kasi the minute they approve that, talagang uh, they can come to the United States, work here, live here, and make it. This is going to be their new home. Yun ang, yun ang pagkaalam namin sa special immigrant visa. Yes, tamo pa. Kaya dun sa interagency meeting June 7, 
pati uh, DOTR, transport, di ba? Kasama. Kasama na rin DepEd. Ibig sabihin, four years of school. Kasi four years average yung application ng SIV. mag pa pa bayan uh, Elementary at high school, di ba? Kasi pinatawag kayo. Sino-sino pa rin pinatawag? DICT, DOST. Lahat tinawag eh, di ba? So, pang matagalan yan, hindi yan two weeks na sinasabi ipoprocess. Uh, Senator Jingoy, nagtaas po kayo ng kamay. Nakamute po, Senator Jingoy, nakamute ka. Ay, Senator Jingoy, uh, did you raise your hand? Nakamute ka pa. Ayun. Paki an ayun, Sen Senator Jingoy. Yes, Madam Chair, for those Afghan nationals uh, who will be denied the special immigrant visa, may I know what is the plan of the United States and where will they go if their uh, temporary visas will expire? Who will cover the expenses if they need to leave the uh, Philippines? Uh, well, silang, silang gagastos ng lahat. And if they are, as, as they put in that concept paper, they will repatriate them to a third country or bring them back to where, where they are. But uh, they, they, they claim that the percentage of this is, is, is practically nil. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador, I was just wondering, why did they choose our country? Why not other ASEAN countries like Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, et cetera, et cetera. I was just curious about it. Well, let's put it this way. Ang tingin nila, we are an ally of the United States. So, tinanong nila sa atin kung we are willing to do this. And and it's true, yung sinabi nga ni Senator Tolentino that we've had a history of really accepting this even from before. Uh, alam mo, yung, for instance, yung ginawa ni President Manuel Quezon, hanggang ngayon, dito sa Amerika, yung American Jewish community, lagi nilang sinasabi nila ang Pilipinas ay talagang nakatulong sa kanila. So they're they are really going out of their way rin whenever they can. Uh, marami nagsasabi sa akin sa Israel, yung ating mga OFWs, iba yung trato sa kanila. Uh, they, they give them special care. Uh, dahil sa ginawa nung ni the President Kesot. So I, I assume that, uh, as, as pointed out, even if they're not refugees, we have a reputation for being able to be open in helping uh, people in distress. Yes. Uh, what about the uh, vetting process, uh, Mr. Ambassador? Who is going to to uh, vet them? Well, the U.S. government will vet them. Actually, they've already been. They are going to be vetted first before they come to the Philippines. We are going to, as, as Secretary Manalo said, we're going to issue them uh, a temporary visa to come into the Philippines for about 59 days. So there is a time limit for that uh, for that visa. And once it's expired, the United States is, I assume, uh, obligated to bring or either process it immediately or they have to leave the country. Yes. Are we not going to be involved in the vetting process, uh, Sir Ambassador? Well, our vetting process is really going to be before we issue the visa. Do, do nothing. And all of this information has to be given to us, whatever information that we can get on the people that we're uh, giving these visas. Uh, Ambassador Wallace, I'm sorry, uh, Jingoy. Um, what visa? We're giving them a visa before they come to the Philippines, Ambassador well, Wallace? I think they're giving, uh, from what the understanding is. sila kay Ambassador sa Islamabad? Dadaan mo ng Islamabad bago pumunta sa Pilipinas? Nalito yata ako. Well, I, 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 yun ang, yun ang pagkaalam ko that we, we have to issue them a, some kind of a visa to be able to stay in the Philippines habang they're being processed. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair? Ibigay yung visa saan? Sa Kabul? Wala na tayong embassy sa Kabul, di ba? Pati U.S.? You mean to say, upon arrival, may visa ang ibibigay ang Pilipinas? Yeah, well, itanong natin kay Secretary Manalo kasi yun ang understanding na, na naririnig ko <laughs> na sinabi sa akin. Madam Chair. Yes, Senator Jingoy, sorry. Mas lalo Chair, yata akong nalito. Pasensya. Hindi ba, hindi ba doble doble ang pag-issue ng visa? Mag-issue tayo ng visa dito sa... Pilipinas, tapos mag issue ng visa sa Amerika. Bakit din na diretso sa Amerika? Bakit kailangan pa rito? Well, 
Ang masyal ka muna. Teka. Oh. Secretary Manalo, please. mag issue upon arrival ng visa sa Pilipinas. Ma'am, hindi. Uh... Pero sabi ni Ambassador Babes eh, pagkatapos natin screen, mabibigyan natin ng visa. Eh, upon arrival, nakapag-screen na ba tayo o umaasa lang tayo sa sinasabi ng mga Amerikano na mga okay itong mga taon to? Secretary Manalo. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I think what uh, Ambassador Romualdez is meant to say is that uh, we have to issue a visa before they arrive uh, in the Philippines. So, bibigyan sila ng... So, saan sa nila makukuha yung well, visa yan? Dadaan it, muna sila sa Islamabad? Normally, it would, have to be, eh. it would have to be through Islamabad. Islamabad PE would issue the 9A visa para maka-enter. Napakagulo ah, naman. Ang dami naman nilang papasyalan. So, iikot muna, galing Kabul, pupuntang Islamabad. mag apply sa ilang Pilipino sa embassy ron. 50,000 sila, katapat nila, tatlong Pilipino. Ganun ba yon? Normally, uh, ganun. That's what we would do now. Tapos, sa Islamabad, pumayag na ba yung Pakistan dito sa scheme na to? Hindi, kinukonsult pa namin <laughs> ang Islamabad. Hindi pa alam ng Pakistan. Magugulat na lang sila dadagsa yung mga kung sino-sino ron. Okay. Tapos, liliko na ngayon yung aeroplano. Pupunta babalik sa Pinas. Ganun ba yun? Biglang landing sa Clark. Po. Electronic appearance at the counter in Islamabad. Anong level ng screening kung pindot-pindot lang? Yes. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Um, before this Afghan, Afghans, uh, which are fully vetted, assume, with assumption, fully vetted, vetted by the Americans, by the chief of mission okay. of, the US of the U.S. Embassy, it is still the and obligation. And not the Filipinos. We've never met them before. No, not yet. Okay. It is still the Philippine obligation. It is the obligation of the Philippines to give to um, to process them because they are Category A restricted nationals. All restricted nationals, there are other, other countries that are classified as such. We do a face-to-face a -face interview, and before that, a documents that we request from All of this is going to happen before they come to the Philippines? That should be the case. Madam. That should be the case. This is your and my understanding yes. of what normally yes. occurs, right? But uh, you said it correctly that there is uh, the capacity of Islamabad PP. P is uh, uh, Philippine Embassy in Islamabad is a little bit of a, a challenge. And at the same time, Madam Chair, uh, it is the it, in the concept paper of the Americans, they prefer that these Afghans will fly directly from Kabul to Manila. Di ba diretso Kabul dito sa New yeah. Clark, pupunta sa the crib sa New Clark City, di ba? So, yeah. Yun ang sinasabing plano. Mm -hmm. Wala namang binanggit na Islamabad. Di kita wala walang bida wala. ang pinagsasabi. Mm -hmm. At sigurado ako si Ambassador Cervantes <laughs> at ang buong Pakistan government kung lang alam tungkol dito. <laughs> Secretary Manalo, please. Yes, ma'am. Kung, uh, kung ngayon, if we agreed, halimbawa, just example, and we didn't do any change in our uh, visa procedure, talagang dadaan sa Islamabad PE. But in the event, na we are now open to this idea, we may have to find additional or different kinds of processing, like maybe through electronic, etc. para lang ma-accommodate yung number. But wala pa tayo dun. I'm just saying, uh, but if it were held today and we agreed today, ganyan, we, they would have to go through Islamabad. Dahil kasi, nagtataka ako, um... In the United States, they very clearly have their um, Afghan Allies Protection Act of 2009. The uh, legal infrastructure is very clear-cut. It was amended twice, most recently in 2021. Kayang-kaya nila ayusin yung sa kanila. Kayang-kaya nila kunin yung mga dati nilang empleyado. At sa tingin ko, talagang responsibilidad nila. If they're not willing to uh, accommodate their own employees, nor to amend, once again, they've amended twice before, the Afghan Aliens Act, why should we be the ones to bend our immigration rules, overburden our staff 
in uh, Islamabad as well as New Clark City and impose all sorts of obligations on our neighbors. Di ko naintindihan eh. Yes, Secretary uh, Manalo, Ambassador Babes, does this seem reasonable? Um, I think uh, we will take into account your, your views uh, when we consider this further. Okay. We uh, do not in any way attempt to influence or curtail the president's almost absolute power in forging foreign policy. However, um, by the rubric of simple reasonableness, this appears to be outlandish given the uh, bending of rules required, the imposition on our already over... Uh, uh, burdened resources, given our security status, which the uh, Muslim Filipinos themselves uh, declare is precarious at present, once again. Um, exactly how long do we think the special immigrant visa um, will take to be granted? Nine months is what is stated under the Afghan Allies Protection Act of the United States. Nine months ang nasa batas nila, to one to two weeks ang sinabi sa concept note. Tama ba, Secretary Manalo? How far along are these Afghan nationals uh, with their SIV applications? Alam ko, di ba, magpapakita sila ng HR, recommendation ng superior, uh, qualifications. Uh, how far along are they? Kasi ang balita, nung dinaan sila sa Qatar at UAE, meron na silang SIV, pre-approved sila. Etong pupunta sa Pilipinas, hindi sila pre-approved. Ibang-iba ang sitwasyon sa UAE at saka sa Qatar. Doon may SIV na sila. Eto, wala pang SIV. Tapos nagre-reklamo nga mismo yung mga American lawyers na ketagal-tagal daw sa Afghan uh, um, request. Nagpe-pending daw ng higit na apat na taon. So how far along are these guys in uh, their special immigrant applications? Um, Maybe Ambassador Babes was given an indication kung sana pareho lang ng Qatar at UAE, hindi nakaka-nervyos yan. Pwede na rin. Secretary Manalo, please. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, well, what the U.S. has told us is that these applicants would are in the last stages of the, the uh, um, completing the process. So presumably that will fall within our 30 to 59 day requirement per stay. We would have to make very clear that that's the case, but that's what they have Sir, uh, intimated to us. That since they're in the last stage... The grant of a visa is like pregnancy. It's either you are or you aren't. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about the last stages. Uh, there simply is no last stage. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, well, uh, presumably... Uh, we would have to make very clear that whatever uh, process, it has to fall within the 30 to 59 day period we allow for restricted nationals. And it would have to be completed and they would have to uh, proceed to the United States. Let me give you a side story. The problem really is, Secretary, that so many time frames are being given. One to two weeks ang processing daw. Ayon sa kanilang batas, nine months maximum daw. Ayon naman sa experience ng mga Afghan na nag a sa Amerika, kabalikat ng kanilang mga abogado, umaabot daw ng four years. So, gano'n katagal yan sa Pilipinas? Four years maninirahan dito? Yes, but which, which, uh, which timeline should we uh, believe? Apakadami eh, as a one to two weeks, 30 to 59 days, tapos ando nine months to four years. Alin po? Ma'am, oh. I think uh, responding to the question based on their concept note that after a trial uh, of a few, they do not process, we can discontinue it uh, on our option. That's right, that's and right. It, it is also 
uh, it also cuts against what they want to do if they will not process those notionally in here quickly sure. because they can't process others because we will limit the number if we agree notionally. So, so that is the default, but I, we understand and I personally am aware of the backlogs of the Homeland Security in the United States. So uh, who can predict what will happen is anybody's guess. That's correct. Like I said, I have personal uh, experience with the humanitarian parole, and uh, it grants you no status at all. For years upon years, Secretary Manalo, Ay. Secretary Manalo, Sorry. please. Thank you, ma'am. Um, well, uh, I'm just going to quote now from the concept paper, which the U.S. And on that particular case, it says that the processing for these visa cases, so those applicants, would take 30 to 60 days, uh, after which the U.S. government would transport these Afghan nationals to the United States for permanent resettlement or, if found ineligible, to another country. So I'm just quoting from the concept. So this would fall, I mean, assuming we agree to this. So this wala yung one to two weeks? Well, Kasi yun na no, quote kay Ambassador Romualdez yata well, or it, some other it, DFA official? It could take, maybe in some cases, uh, earlier than 30 days. But I think what the U.S. means here is stops. It won't exceed uh, 60 days. Okay, on the magical uh, 60th day, what will occur? Wala pa yung SIV. Well, the U.S. Uh, uh, would be obligated, as we see it here, to transport these nationals, uh, if ineligible, for example, hindi nakaabot sa 60 days, to another country uh, outside the Philippines. Not the Philippines. They wouldn't stay in the Philippines. If the application is disapproved, the applicants are then considered refugees, and the principle of non-refoulement becomes applicable, we can no longer send them back to Afghanistan. What's plan B? Thank you, ma'am. That's that's a point that we have asked the DOJ for for uh, for an opinion or clarification. The obverse could also occur if the Philippine uh, government classifies the applicants as not having refugee status, repatriates them to Afghanistan where their visa applications are not approved, the Philippines will be in breach of its uh, obligations under 1951 uh, Convention, 57 Protocol, and uh, something happens, unfortunately, to these applicants. It later turns out the government misqualified their status, and they were, in fact, refugees. We've seen many, many movies about this. This has happened too many times. What happens to the Philippine status then? Um, what happens to uh, our reputational risk, as it were? Secretary Manalo, please. Thank you, ma'am. Well, that is a point that we've also been... Parang labis-labis na papogi ito. Makamadali tayo ng hindi oras. Yeah, uh, we have also, uh, in, in, in a similar vein, looked at that, the issue you have raised. And in fact, we've again also posed that uh, question to DOJ uh, and get their opinion kung ano kaya yung implication kung mayari yan. But uh, yes, that's also an issue that we are also uh, contending with the point you raised. Okay, does DOJ have uh, the courage to answer? Because I'm not sure. Your Honours, uh, we concur having received the request for legal opinion coming from the DFA, and we are uh, in the process of finalizing our legal opinion. Uh, may we just uh, clarify that we agree with the statements uh, made uh, that these Afghan nationals are not refugees uh, because there is a process involved in being recognized as a refugee under the 1951 convention the 1957 uh, protocol uh, your honors yes uh, thank you and um okay just points of information uh to your best knowledge ambassador babes from Waldez, secretary manalo uh considering that the u.s embassy in kabul is no longer operational who's the chief of mission who will be approving vetting and sending over their afghan employees uh thank you thank you ma'am uh yes that's an issue we were going to ask the u.s uh uh if we ever got to talk to them again on the who is this c o m 
since there's no more embassy in, in Kabul. But their uh, concept paper mentioned the COM. But so we, surely they know who the guy is that's why and we, where he stays. That's why we would ask. Most likely it will be someone in Washington, but we just have to confirm. Ka, ang magvevet yung Washington? Magvevet niya yung nasa Afghani? I, I'm just guessing. But, uh, Parang ang gulo, no? There's ka, it can't be a chief of mission in Washington. It's a mission somewhere. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, uh, Chief of Mission na sakop ang Afghanistan dahil yes, nagsara yung, yung Kabul. Yung, yung Washington may, yan. Yung may Afghan desk sa State Department who, who holds Pabalik the, sa State Department, Washington? No, she will just oversee. Apparently, the uh, so the uh, the one in charge of the Afghan... Eh, mas magulo naman yata yan sa atin. Well, Guaranteed delay yan. Magi State Department. Eh, de natin Babalik sa swamp. We will raise that with them if we see them. Walang malapit lapit na chief of mission. Papano yung chief of mission dito sa Pinas sa Manila? Ah, si Ambassador dito. Hindi, kasi nagtatanong ako dahil paano naman yung ambassador natin si Ambassador Cervantes sa Islamabad? Sinong kadil niya? Di natin alam kung sino yung counterpart niyang kano. Hindi, nalilito kasi ako kung sino. Sino, di ba? Kasi critical dito yung vetting, di ba? Alam na natin yun, yung vetting, di ba? It's going to be so clear. Ang sinasabi natin, walang kakayahan ng Pilipinas mag-vet ng mga Afghan nationals na hindi natin kaano-ano, hindi natin kakilala, hindi natin alam kung saan nang galing. Pero, kaya ng mga Amerikano. Umaasa lamang tayo sa Amerikano. Pero, yung mga Amerikano, wala namang opisina dun sa Kabul para kalkalin lahat ng records nila na malamang nawala na rin. Ang aasahan natin yung Washington pa rin. Ganun ba yun? Since we're only going to be taking the words of the Americans for granted, you, we'll take the word of the Americans for the uh, um, ironclad vetting procedure. Uh, which Americans are we talking to, Sana Dito? No? Since we have no capacity nga to conduct our own screening and background. Yes, Secretary Manalo. Uh, Madam Chair, the, our, our, um, as you said, and I think the points you have made are, are very relevant. Yung, kaya we are uh, really, uh, the next step really would be to put together all of our information and, and have really have due diligence among our security uh, agencies just to be sure to that these points are uh, considered if, if we decide to uh, talk with the U.S. And, in, and then the issue of the COM, in fact, that was one point that uh, I raised in our internal discussions, who exactly is the COM? And in fact, we will have to be clarified this with the U.S. And I think the points you've raised are also relevant that uh, perhaps if, if, uh, if it's in Washington, eh, there might be a problem because of distance. I don't know, but we could certainly raise that point. And it, but they have not yet in their concept paper identified who this would be, who this Pero is. chief of mission, di ba? Siyempre nasa abroad yun. Hindi naman Washington yun. They're referring us to some office somewhere. Okay. So, um, okay, just uh, to round up uh, the... Uh, Loose ends here. Since the Afghan nationals previously worked for the United States government, some of them will be targets of reprisal by anti-U.S. terrorist groups. How do we intend to protect them? We don't want to keep them prisoner. We don't want to confine them to a restricted space and deprive them of freedom of mobility. At the same time, we're fully aware that they could be targets. How do we protect them? Perhaps we can ask the AFP, the PNP, what will be the cost of such protection? Ma'am, for the part of the PNP, as mandated by law, we are we are to provide the necessary security assistance and uh, for those who are here in our country or sojourning this country. And uh, for that matter, we have prepared some briefing uh, presentation if uh, Madam Chair will uh, uh, let us uh, permit us to 
a bit shown in uh, that's okay uh, i'm just happy to hear that you have something prepared and uh, please submit them we'll peruse them at the, the right time uh given uh, the uh, uh status of the situation how much will it cost to provide all this extra protection already uh the city of marawi is crying for additional uh, um armed forces assistance madam chair until this time we have no um cost of the security arrangement that we have planned because uh, of the number of those Afghan nationals who will be coming over. Yes, Thank you. Um, the um, exploding cost of living is no secret to anyone, and more and more of our countrymen are experiencing hunger. Uh, repeatedly, it has been said that the U.S. will absorb all costs. While some of these are easily determinable, the reality is that other costs will not be readily apparent from the outset. And the personnel, for example, that you will have to assign uh, for protection and uh, the depth ed that will have to take care of the children and uh, siblings involved, um, they will no longer be able to perform the regular functions for our citizens or for the agencies. Will there be compensation for this government, for the government employees and even private citizens who will be similarly burdened? Um, Ambassador Romualdez, you've been adamant that the Americans will pay for everything. That is the understanding I have, Madam Chair, because they told us that uh, when we have a formal discussion uh, on on all of these uh, matters that we want to take up, they will, of course, look at it and see whether it is, in fact, really viable for them to be able to, if we present them a, a cost that this is what it will cost us, and you said that you will take care of everything, this is what we have. So on that basis, we can actually either say yes or no. Uh, they just uh, would like to to know from us whether there we are prepared to sit down and discuss uh, all the issues that uh, were pointed out earlier and also by you madam chair and i think that uh, by then we will know exactly what the the real score is if this is going to be everything taken care of by the united states or the other things that uh, we have other concerns like uh, for instance uh, you said about the visas and all that uh, that that also entails cost, obviously, or at least uh, personnel that we will have to assign. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the worry, of course, if this becomes a lingering problem, we have no set timelines. And uh, four years would be a very long time. That's the entire high school period. Um, I doubt if DepEd will be able to undertake all that. In any case, uh, just to round things up, what is the status, finally, of the U.S. request? At which point are we? Is the approval still under negotiations? Has it uh, been recommended for approval by the president? And is the executive branch merely fine tuning the details given that apparently there have been several interagency meetings already last year? A meeting, I believe in April, thereafter June 2 and then June 7 the latest. What, therefore, is the status of the U.S. request for the Afghan nationals to come to the Philippines? Uh, yes, Secretary you. Manalo, please. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, ma'am. Uh, well, first, we have not entered into any negotiation with the United States on this issue. It's only been through informal contact. In fact, this is not considered a negotiation, even if yes. a formal concept note was actually not, provided not, and the State Department followed up. Not considered, at least as we as we know it, because uh, it's just an idea of the U.S. And we are we just uh, decide we have uh, within the Philippines gone over it and given our ideas to each other. Secretary Manalo, I think Ambassador Romualdez has uh, given interviews indicating that it was subject of negotiation because we are considering the request. And I'd like to call on you, Sekpoa, um, who also appears to have a different uh, um, understanding of the same. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. No, uh, basically, uh, because this has been a subject of consultation with the national government agencies, DepEd being one of yes, them. Yes, that's correct. There are uh, already, as far as uh, this hearing is concerned, three meetings of record involving many, many agencies. Yes, ma'am. Although on the part of DepEd, we were only uh, able to attend one, which was last uh, June 7, uh, wherein we also registered, and we also want to register now and state for the record our vehement objection and opposition to the proposal in its entirety. Uh, this has been formalized through, again, as I've said, through our comments submitted to the Anti-Terrorism Council, uh, mainly on legal grounds and on security issues. If I may just quickly summarize. Yes, on the please, legal please. grounds, uh, the department, of course, under the stewardship of the Vice President, Secretary of Education, feels that this will delve into an issue of sovereignty. As we all know, so in sovereignty, we... Uh, the exercise of rights and functions of a state must be exclusive from intervention from other states or interference. And in this case, uh, this will include the right to determine who can enter the country and who can stay in the Philippines, whether temporarily or permanently. But in the proposal, at least in the notes that were given to us for comment, it seems that the vetting process will be done by the United States of America. And therefore, this is an interference into our uh, exclusive determination as to who can enter our countries, our country. And secondly, uh, of course, uh, as I've mentioned during the June 7 meeting, um, it, based on the information given to us, the only reason why the U.S. will not be processing these Afghans in their in U.S. territories is because some internal rule, law, regulation prohibits them from doing so. And if I, we may echo what the statement of the of the, of the chairperson, why would the U.S. expect us to bend our rules if they are not willing to be flexible in theirs? And that is really a concern of the Department of Education under the vice president. And of course, uh, aside from that, it's really the security concern. As you know, the schools have been witness to armed conflicts uh, locally. Uh, the local terrorist groups is really a concern of the department. And with the, the presence of Afghans here, if, if the NSC is saying or the or Nika is saying that there is low risk in terms of infiltration, we do worry about them being targets uh, because, again, uh, we feel that this, would, this might have the risk of further exacerbating an already unstable situation as regards local terrorist groups in some areas in the country. Uh, with that, ma'am, I, I guess uh, we just have to summarize and, again, uh, state on record our vehement opposition and objection to the proposal in its entirety. And uh, we have again submitted our comments signed by the Vice President to the Secretariat uh, for your perusal. Thank you very much, Yusek. Um, during the meeting, you were informed that the DEP-ED would have to educate the families of uh, these Afghan employees of the United States government? Uh, no, ma'am. We did not get to that point. Uh, we, Why then we were, were you invited? I, I, I think we were invited because DepEd was simply asked to comment by the ATC, the Not anti Council. Not because you were Council. going to be directly involved. Uh, we, did, we haven't gotten to that point. However, uh, during the meeting, we already registered our objection on the proposal. So uh, we didn't really get to the point of where DepEd would be participating. Yes. Yes, without commenting on your direct participation. Together, curiously, with the DOTR, and uh, the OST, I was a little bit perplexed by uh, the assemblage. That's correct. Madam. Thank you very much, Yusek. Anyone else would like to add uh, um, to the discussion? Um, since I have no further questions, um, Commissioner Tansinko, I uh, simply wanted, by way uh, of information, to clarify the chart that you provided, indicating that, in fact, since... Um, the uh, declaration, once again, of the Philippines that we were open to Afghan refugees, particularly uh, following the heart-rendering um, videos we all watched upon the departure of the Americans from Kabul. Um, there appears to be a total of 137 Afghan nationals who have arrived in the Philippines from 2021 to 2023. Is that correct? I refer to the chart submitted by our office here with. Yes, ma'am. It is correct, ma'am, that the 137 arrivals from August 1, 2021 to June 14, 2023 comprises all 
visa categories, not only uh, refugees. It includes uh, the Section 13A, married to a Filipina, and 47A2, 47B, uh, 9A category, seaman. Uh, yes, but in your listing, uh, I refer to refugees because that seems to be the relevant category. That's 47B, refugees. In 2022, you recorded four, but in your final tally, only one. Uh, which is the correct number? The final tally mom is four in in 47B. Okay, so we have four Afghan refugees already in the Philippines. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, are you aware of uh, their whereabouts? Are they working? Are they uh, married? And uh, do they have families in the Philippines? Yes, ma'am. Uh, they are still in the country. Uh. Yes, so uh, we'd like any information on them if you don't have it on hand, even for 47A2, um, because that seems to be a large number, 42 Afghans under 47A2. The 47A2, ma'am, the... On the 2021 year, the 31, uh, this was uh, this includes the 29 that uh, arrived in September 8 of 2021, but they all departed on December 20 of the same year. Okay. Okay. There's also a large number of DFA issued diplomats. 28. Andito pa sila. We have no data as of now, uh, Madam Senator, but uh, these are all issued by the Department of Foreign Affairs. Thank you. Uh, tinatanong ko lang kasi kung uh, baka naman, kung 137, kahit pa paano, may community na ng Afghans dito, kaya karapat-dapat lamang na pumunta sila sa Pilipinas. Pero kung aapat lang at hindi pa natin alam kung nasan sila, palagay ko hindi community yon. Wala silang pag-uuwian, wala silang kamag-anak, wala silang kakilala. Um, yun lang, yun lang ang tinatanong ko dahil uh, nalilito ako kung bakit ang Pilipinas ang napili sa dinami-dami ng bansa. Samantalang alam natin, napakaraming Afghan sa ibang uh, lugar sa Europa, napakadami sa Pakistan, karami-rami nila sa iba't ibang bahagi ng Asia. Yun lang. Anyone else who uh, would like to add something, maybe from the AFP? Uh, anything else that you'd like to uh, share with the committee, please? Definitely, ma'am. As far as the AFP is concerned, ma'am, we are aligned with the statement of the Secretary of National Defense uh, on 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 this issue, ma'am. Uh, we already we already took into consideration our yes, sir, uh, Colonel. Uh, and, which statement of the Secretary? Of uh, everything, ma'am, and, and on on the more specific level, ma'am. Uh, for us, for the AP, ma'am, uh, uh, we also joined the manifestations of the NBI, ma'am, on the security level, ma'am. It would be more prudent to limit the movements and uh, engagements of the applicants, if ever this will be granted to the specific site, ma'am, uh, uh, for for the protection of also of the of of of, of the of both parties, ma'am, the the local population, also the the applicants, ma'am, and also, ma'am, finally, ma'am. Uh, so I take it to mean that uh, the DepEd and USEC PUA are alone in their vehement objection? You also join their manifestation, ma'am. Also, you oh. can't join everyone, Colonel. Yes, ma'am. Pick a side. Attorney Guru, please. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, we share the same uh, position with uh, DepEd. In as much as uh, we welcome the Afghans because they are our uh, brothers and sisters in faith, but uh, with the current uh, discussions ongoing, we are uh, not sure, uh, not really on the uh, protection of our uh, citizen, but for their protection, which might affect also because one factor to be discussed here also, as pointed, pointed out by Secretary Teodoro, is the uh, uh, 
uh, type of accommodations that we have. These are Muslims, so the religious and the cultural sensitivities of these uh, people should be factored in also. So uh, we join with the uh, same position with the uh, DEPED. We uh, uh, vehemently uh, oppose to in its entirety for uh, allowing them to uh, be housed here in the Philippines. Higit sa lahat, Attorney Guru, hindi ba dapat unahin ang housing sa Marawi City kesa sa dito? Okay, sino pa? May dadagdag po? Anyone would like to uh, add? Uh, yes, Secretary. Uh, Just the final the recap, ma'am. I know you're brand new and uh, you weren't <laughs> privy to the earlier discussions. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, uh, in so far as the department is concerned, this is now dependent on the legal opinion, depending on the legal opinion to be given and issued by the DOJ. If they say it's legally permissible, then... As a bar top not sure, what is your legal opinion? Ma'am, uh, I... I won't nail you to this, the Secretary of Defense. It's just you and me, Gibo. No, ma'am, uh, there are ways that it can be legally permissible, but we have to, uh, to anticipate the what-ifs. That's right. And then we have to uh, bring on to the other side uh, uh, and be certain that they are ready, willing, and able to execute their uh, under undertakings. That we have to determine. Uh, if which... you have sanctions and means? Um, Madam Chair, perhaps then To obligate it's, the it, same? And it's reputational risk once again. Right. I think that is the, the 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 strongest sanction that one can give to 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 bring out a case just like I you have so expertly done. I don't know that the Americans have been very good at but you have been very good, keeping Madam together Chair. their reputation <laughs> when they withdraw from wars. No, ma Madam Chair, and you know it, it still hasn't progressed to that, and uh -oh. we are very thankful for the opportunity for us and for me. To be educated personally on the uh, various issues on uh, th that uh, have have arisen in this hearing, and uh, I'll uh, moving forward, uh, we will be really cognizant of this issue. Should the discussion, uh, should the uh, interagency uh, uh, position move forward? Thank you very much. And perhaps the last, last word goes to my much older relative, Ambassador Mualdes, please. Thank you very much, uh, my younger relative. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you very much, Madam Chair, for, for this. And I, I totally agree with, uh, with Secretary Tudoro that uh, whatever was brought out here is these are concerns that obviously we have to really uh, look into. Uh, but I just wanted to correct one point is there, there's never been any real formal discuss, I mean, formal negotiations or discussions with the State Department has just been following up with us here at the embassy in Washington, D.C. And uh, of course, they're always anxious whether it is a yes or a no. And uh, the sooner we do that, obviously, the better it is, because that way, it, by the way, it will also take them perhaps about four to to nine months, I understand, to be able to make sure that whatever facility that they will be using is, is precisely what we're concerned about, which is secure, everything that uh, that is needed for, for the board and lodging of these Afghan nationals will be, will be in place. So uh, that's why they're asking, following it up with us, and uh, it's up to us uh, what we want to do with it and whatever concerns we have, whatever we want to tell them, they're prepared to... Uh, listen and if it's something that's possible they'll do it if not then they go to another country for this salamat maraming salamat um uh the worry of course is that um elections in the united states are uh, ratcheting up and politicians everywhere um make dreadful mistakes uh, whether in washington dc or in the philippines so uh with that, uh, we close this hearing. We certainly have not uh, raised all the questions. We've raised some of the questions, but we've certainly raised the level of confusion. Thank you all for participating. Thank you.